Starting the live again. So let's get Nevin in. And let everyone else join in. Welcome back. We're trying again. This is better now. Yeah. Better? Yeah, you know what? It starts fuzzing a little bit anyway, but... That's the that's the nature of the Instagram lives. They start getting a bit fuzzy as you go. You're you're a little bit on and off, but it's all good, man. Don't worry. Let's do it. All right, sounds good, man. How you, How doing? you doing, man? <laughs> Check out my Thor cup. Oh, brilliant, what? man! Right? You know what? I've been using my son's mug. It's my son's. It's a yeah. Marvel Marvel superheroes one, but I keep picking it up and using it. He's like, why do you keep using my mug? <laughs> yeah. I like I I got like I have like a Spider-Man one and a Superman one and I don't know. I got these a long time ago, but uh, I like this. One. I wanted to show you this one. I got this one specially just to show you. I knew you'd you'd appreciate the Thor cup. Oh yeah. Yeah, Thor with the hammer. So it's what's all about for today, right? brother? What are we doing today? All right, so we're going to be doing a series, people. Uh me and Nevin had a little chat, and one of the most important things for both of us on our journey has been the, the hermetic principles and the seven hermetic principles. If anyone's not familiar with them, um, this book, Gambalion, it breaks them down very simply, but this goes back a long, long time ago. And I'll let Nevin speak a bit more about this because his um, knowledge in terms of details is better than mine, I would say. <laughs> Thanks, um, so, uh, the seven main principles, you know, I speak about these a lot on my Instagram because I'm always referring to the seven hermetic principles. So most of you guys are from my page will know them very well because I've probably done about 20 lives in the last 18 months on the hermetic principles alone. But just to re recap, number one is mentalism. The all is mind. The universe is mental. That's what we're going to focus on today. Number two is correspondence as above, so below. Number three, vibration. Nothing rests. Everything moves. Everything vibrates. Number four, polarity, everything is dual, everything has poles, everything has its pair of opposites. Number five, rhythm, everything flows out and in, everything has its tides, cause and effect, everything has its cause and effect, everything happens according to law and gender, everything has a masculine and feminine aspect. So we talk about that a lot, yin yang. So I, I discuss these all a lot on my page, but we wanted to start with number one. The all is mine. So we're going to do a series. So this will be part one of seven. And we're going to go through each one of the seven hermetic principles in a bit more detail. I mean, really, you can do a whole event on each one. I mean, you can speak yeah. for hours on each one because um, each one is very profound. And there's lots of examples you can give of how they apply in this universe and in life. They're very applicable laws. They're not like just airy fairy concepts. You can apply them to your life the way your mind works, the way energy works, everything works. Like everything is energy, um, even energy. Everything from an energy perspective, the hermetic principles apply. Um, but we have to firstly understand from even the law of vibration, you know, every, everything has its polar opposites, you know, the yin yang, the, the good, the bad, you know, these, these things all apply to life in your state of mind, your state of being, the way you be. It's all uh, a matter of vibration. Genders are at play all the time. Divine feminine, divine masculine aspects. So we can go into these all in a lot more detail. And that's the whole plan. So what we're going to do is focus on all is mind the and the mentalism concept. concept, which is number one. So I Ooh. think the way we handle this, I think um, save us speaking over each other because we both like the <laughs> Because I figured out both what me and um, Nevin do, we both channel, basically. Yeah, that's and it. Perfect. Yeah. 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 So so that's why it's not really a conversation and we actually struggle to converse because it's a bit like stop and start. It's like stops. It's, you know, you have to stop and start the flow. So yeah. Yeah. me and Nevin tend to work better if we just just open well, up and speak. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm that's why I'm like, you know, you have the mic and you channel it and then you pass it back to me. We'll We'll do like uh, one of those races, pass the baton back and forth. And exactly. that'll work the best. Yeah. So yeah. I think you, you, what you should do is maybe give us, I'll just let you take the stage first, and you just talk about 
The all is mine. My, number one, the hermetic sure. principle in your own words. And then I'll take that, over and I'll explain it in my own words. Sure, sure. Exactly. Everybody's got their take. And I think the first, the, the first things that come out from the top of your head are usually the things that were most impactful to you in your life because these hermetic principles are you know especially for what when you've studied them you know for a dozen years and more they really tend to rewire your brain folks they rewire how you think okay and they go together with all of this work that i do the kabbalah you know the spiritual alchemy and all of that stuff it's all hand in hand but it's good we're starting with this first the pr principle of mentalism the all is mind the universe is mental because this is even according to the kabbalian the master key okay and so if you don't grasp this principle you don't believe in it or you just want to kind of believe things happen by chance and your life is what it is because you know just things are against you or whatever then you can't activate this principle this is the master key principle and this is how it's stated and the reason is because we have we have soul spirit body mind the mind in the is the interconnecting link between the soul and the spirit and the body so the mind is the thing that we're constantly that's the thing that supports our consciousness because we're all consciousness so the principle of mentalism basically states that the all the all being not just the concept of god but the manifested universe and the unmanifested universe everything is uh, is the all is mind so it's all mind the universe is mental so the most practical way of really understanding that is i always say well we're living in the dream of god okay so this physical reality that we're in this is the dream of god and then with because we're made in the image of the creator we also have the ability to um to dream and that's how we're made in the image of the creator so at night you know we spend about eight hours at night sleeping and dreaming and then we wake up and now we're in this dream of god all over again but the connecting link between our dreams god as above so below all these principles magic how magic works you know mantras yoga everything and anything spiritual the connecting link is that it's all that the universe is composed of the mind the mind is what allows you to create it allows the creator to create us and everything within the universe and it allows us to create realities that we live within our own minds and then this outward reality that we all agree on which is you know this the society that we live in but we're living in the dream of god okay it's just uh, we interpret it as being real because these physical bodies are real our brains are real which interpret this reality but the mind which would be localized within the brain is consciousness consciousness takes part in the mind okay or and vice versa and that's what generates this whole reality and the reason why it's such a beautiful understanding is because it unlocks your inner potential for you to be a co-creator so that you can now create your reality instead of just things happening to you by chance and now you can become a master manifester and that's what both me and Campbell are talking about this entire time is being master manifestors that's what that's where you know that's what truly unites me and you is 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 that we are teaching people how to be that because i think at the deepest level we we really have grasped this principle we've shaped and reshaped our own lives and and brought out certain potentials and 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 just when we're continuing to strive for more and now we're like hey you know we want to share this incredible secret with other people so i'll i'll pass the baton now to you that's kind of off the top of my head the first thing i thought would be most important to understand yeah definitely man thank you very much for that brother so yeah i speak about this concept of being this being a dream i mean actually my book i have it here my book is called live the dream okay not as in like live the dream buy flashy cars buy flashy houses no like live the dream as in you ain't a fucking dream like that's my whole so, my whole yeah. way in the mind of god so god yeah, it yeah. is god dreams nature God dreams nature, and we are nature. So God dreams the plants, the trees, the animals, the skies, the oceans. We are dreamers within the dream. So we also have the ability to co-create because we are made in God's image. So we are like mini-me's in a sense. We, you know, like Dr. Evil in um, Austin Powers has a mini-me. Like we're like the mini-me's, right? We're like, that's why I say demigods. Rather than say we're God, we are like yeah. demigods. Right. We're half. We're half. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're we're half human, half god, basically, in a sense. That's basically it. That's that's what being a superhero is. So you know, we're in the dream. So my whole mindset had to switch, like to as in like this is a dream. So every day for me, it's like I don't connect yesterday's dream to today's dream. Today's a new dream, and I don't think about tomorrow's dream. So that whole concept of carpe diem sees today like there's no tomorrow. Like that's that's the way you live it. Like the all is mind, but there I break it down a bit further. So the con main concepts Nevin's hit on really well. So I won't repeat that. I'll just take things a bit further. So um, you can break thing. You you can break your own mind into levels to understand it better. They, this helps me anyway. So being a like a, a therapist, NLP therapist, and timeline therapist since 2005, I've understood the power of the subconscious, the unconscious mind. Now, hypnotherapists use this a lot and therapists use this a lot. We tap into clients' unconscious minds, not their conscious mind. We, we bypass their conscious mind, their conscious intellect. So a lot of the time, they don't even know what's going on or what we're going into. But we know, as therapists, there's an unconscious mind, the unconscious intelligence, your subconscious, which is basically a storehouse of everything. It's all your memories, everything, everything that exists. So... When you go deeper into the unconscious mind, it's vast. Like, you know, like people say that the tip, of the tip of the iceberg is like your conscious intellect. And the iceberg, the, main, the whole of the iceberg is below the ocean. And that's your subconscious. That's your unconscious. And your unconscious mind runs your whole body. When you go to sleep at night, you trust it to keep you alive and wake up the next day. It's keeping you alive right now. So it's not like no one's got it. Everyone's got it. Like it's the unconscious intelligence that runs your body. Your unconscious yeah. mind, it gives you, gives you a heartbeat, plump, plumps blood through your veins. It, it, is doing, it is basically magic running through you. So all you've got yeah. to do, your unconscious mind is a gateway to super consciousness. So I say there's consciousness, there's conscious intellect, and there's lots of symbolism behind this, like Shiva you'll often see him with the, the crescent moon and the star. And you'll even see this on many flags, the crescent moon and the star. The symbolism of that is the crescent moon is like your, the eternal mind. And that is connected to your unconscious mind, superconscious mind. And that star is your intellect, your conscious intellect, which everyone has began to believe they are. They've been shaped into these human beings that use their brain to figure everything out. Like this must go there, that must go there. And it's all about connecting the dots with the details. And that's your intellect. And that's where everyone gets stuck because they're trying to consciously figure it out with intellect and you've got to get beyond that you've got to go into the unconscious intelligence and the intelligence is where the power is and that's the gateway to super consciousness so you become conscious of how the unconscious mind works you become super conscious you know and I was gonna, consciousness and i was going to add to that actually uh that what you're discussing is the now the use of the principle of gender so the mm. principle of gender you you have the i which would be the self, the part that witnesses uh, reality. So in your mind, there's a part that witnesses your thoughts, and then there's the thought. So you have the I and the me, and that's the principle of gender, the I being the masculine uh, self that, that's you know just uh, pro projective force. It's projecting images into the me. The me is, is this uh, subconscious womb. So when you talk about the subconscious, the subconscious is, in a sense, um, it's coded like it's, if it's not coded, mm -hmm. if it's not given input by our own willpower, because it's your willpower, that's your eye. That's the part of the, the soul. If the, your soul is not the one that's inputting information into your subconscious to create these images, literally like a movie playing in your, you know, mm -hmm. here, um, then it's other people's. Right. And so, you know, if you're not projecting and giving, creating your own reality through your own willpower then other people are influencing you because we're constantly oh, yes. impregnating this mental womb um uh, the subconscious uh with our thoughts or other people's thoughts uh, but when you get into that zone and you start to um you start to really raise the vibration this is kind of where the the vibe principle of vibration comes in when you're trying to control your reality you're trying to raise the vibration of your willpower like a tuning fork so that you can your consciousness heightens and now it's impregnating more of these thoughts into your subconscious so that you're actually generating your own reality as opposed to you know your parents or your girlfriend or wife or boyfriend or whatever or just people that are influential even your governments 
even mm-hmm. you know media this is what media does media is trying to impregnate that me principle inside your brain so that it completely guides your reality you know and we're completely under the control of media and governments and these you know these figures and people in power because they're guiding our reality because most people don't know that they're they're uh they have this power to shape and create their own reality and it's it it, it starts with learning to use your will power that's the key that's the i you know and then as you're talking uh as you were saying to reach that super conscious state and the super conscious state would be the part that's uh the archetypal world in the kabbala and and you know you're talking about the different functions uh, and you know this is where kabbala and kabbalion go um hand in hand because kabbala breaks down all these inner functions so you have the intellect desire imagination will power uh you know intuition memory all these things and you're learning how to essentially uh use raise the vibration of your consciousness so that you can access and trigger and activate these different parts of self so you can constantly impregnate that that me and that's yeah. the, that's now how the principle of vibration and the principle of mentalism go together as so yeah, we were talking about that connect, right they all connect so you know so we we start with all is mind but you'll see how they all connect each one yeah, that's what i kind of have like they that's all what interplay I kind of with each do other they can't really exist this. without each other you know you'll see yeah, that in the yeah. end um so you know i i break things you know you can break mind down into different levels you know ultimately above that all is the mind of god you know there has to be intelligence behind everything and that's the mind of god you know that's this dream like when you look around you look around everyone look around the room right now all the objects that you can see have been created from people's dreams yeah yeah they had to imagine it and they had to bring it into this reality that's the proof that human beings are co-creators now yeah but you look at the ocean you look at the mountains you look at the sky now a human being didn't create that so that's like god god's dream dream that god dreamed us god is dreaming us god is dreaming mm-hmm. us like right now so god is the dream of like nature itself but we are co-creators within this dream world so we are creating too so i see things like you got the egoic mind and i suppose you can bring your conscious and your unconscious into that it's all ego identity to some extent but some of it is programmable right so um and this is why many people's identities are programmed by and influenced by others and obviously the powers that be knows this so they are always feeling your mind with bullshit so that they yeah. you can remain manipulated and controlled but when you yeah. break the the whole truth freedom comes from breaking out realizing well most people are you know they get to that point where they they woke and then you truly awaken you know so you know you get woke a little yeah, bit some so something's going on and then like a lot of people get angry and frustrated at that stage and then you get beyond that stage because that's why you get so many angry woke people because they haven't truly awakened yet so you got woke really and awakened you know yeah. so you get um awakened is a different thing um but you got you you got your egoic mind and then there's a monad there's a monadic mind which which actually many people may not un- know this concept but uh, um I understand this and I've actually seen this like when you leave the body you'll see the different layers of the mind and you'll actually be shown to you when you transcend so transcended consciousness actually shows you this it's not like a you actually see it yourself when you dive deep enough into the depths of your mind your mind will show you all the layers Now you might label it differently so don't get caught up on the labels <laughs> um because I'm going to say egoic mind and then I'm going to call it a monad because that's actually in occult knowledge there is something called a monadic mind and now a, mo- a monadic mind is also is connected to other people so monads are connected to other people this is why well, you see the people that you see and connect with in this world this is why you guys that are on this live are here on this live because our monadic minds are connected it's a, like an oversoul there's a soul and then there's an oversoul which connects other souls and the monadic and, mind connects other minds and then beyond, beyond that all is the mind of god which creates the monads themselves and i would add that the, the monad uh it would be your essentially your soul because yes. your spirit your spirit is something we all share but the soul is individual and then that's on top cool. of that you have the god self and that's the great god that none of us are but we're all are 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 we're all god but we're not the whole god you know this is where yeah, people Yeah exactly and we can't people, fully comprehend it but we can get a taste of it like we can get a taste yeah we, yeah, we taste. can understand that it's unknowable 
and we can understand certain things, and this is what the Hermeticists have done, to understand that the, the all is unknowable, but that by understanding and studying nature and ourselves and our inner world and outer world and everything, that's how we get to know God, because everything is the body of God, essentially. And, and uh, you might hear me refer to what I call the mind of God as a divine logos. So yeah. quite often referred to as the Logos. And divine Logos, if you look at occult wisdom and esoteric knowledge and wisdom, ancient wisdom, they would actually refer to the mind of God. And even Hermes, hermetic, the where the hermetic the principles news. come from, Herm Hermes Trismegistus, he refers to God as the mind. You know, he refers the to news. God as, a, you'll see him interchangeably in the Corpus Hermeticum, interchangeably referring to God as mind and mind as God. Yeah. You know, yeah. so he, 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 you see that interplay with between God and mind and there is light as well. But the divine logos, the, the logos itself is like the word of God, the wisdom of God. The so light of God, God is even more than that. God is even more than that. But the divine logos yeah. becomes like the word of God. So that's what well, we also, can That's what you can gonna, connect with. Yeah, I was also going to say that it's the, uh, also it's the light of God. So noose, mm. it's called in hermetic uh, hermeticism and it's the light of God the mind of God, and also it refers to the Poimandres, who was the dragon that gave Hermes the initial knowledge, and that is, that's literally the Kundalini energy. It's the dragon, the original Interesting dragon. Interesting you mentioned the dragon. I just put a, yeah. a, 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 a post up the day before yesterday, I think it was, the dragon getting slain, and all these people attacking yeah. the dragon, and you'll, you'll hear this in history. There's lots of this we've got to get the dragon kind of thing. And the dragon is a metaphor again. It's like the dragon is within you. That is the divine knowledge wisdom, basically, you know, yeah. and that yeah. dragon, and you just continue there, uh, uh, Hermes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I love it. Well, yeah, so, um, so that's, the, that's the inner Kundalini force. So when we're activating the Kundalini force, we're trying to activate the light within. By activating the light within, we become the word of God. And that's what all the spiritual traditions aim at and that's what they're alluding to metaphorically and symbolically jesus is the light of the world he is the prototype of the kundalini awakening process he is the sun the 12 apostles are the 12 zodiacs surrounding the sun and so essentially the sun itself that we look at the physical sun that gives us light that is the activating force of the kundalini inside of us mm -hmm. triggered by the soul which is a spark of light from the sun and so you have all these words you have light sun uh, knowledge, wisdom, truth, right? And, and, and all of them kind of go together because the idea is when you're embodying the light, like me and uh, Cambo, uh, then we become channels for the light. So now we're able to kind of step into that zone, this timelessness yeah. zone, where we're literally just channeling information that's given to us by the sun. But that sun and the light inside the sun, that is the white light that contains all the universe. That's the spirit, but it's channeled uh, into this frequency, this material dimension through our sun. But that is the white light. The white light is what contains everything. That is the mind of God. The noose is built upon the white light. But we can't see it. But what we can see is the light from the sun. And now we're connecting to that light through a Kundalini awakening process, which raises the energy to the crown chakra, which is what? The white light. And so now we become embodiments of the white light and develop an inner understanding that we will live beyond this, this, uh, uh, this incarnation. This is what separates, let's say, religion, spiritual philosophy, science. Okay, science doesn't believe in the afterlife because they haven't proven the existence of the soul. And so if the soul doesn't exist, right, and the only thing is the physical body and that thing perishes, then there's no afterlife. But that's a very grim reality because for thousands of years we've known that we have a soul and that's what we are trying to evolve so to you know, to become uh, spiritually enlightened and things. And, but to do that, we need to activate this inner light, you know? So in a sense, you know, this is a sidetrack, but in a sense why, you know, science, as much as it's helping us develop all these things, it's only studying this dimension of reality, you know? And, mm -hmm. and, and so the soul is on a totally different dimension that science can't touch. And so, you know, you can't take away science. We cannot allow science to take away uh, you know, the, the, the importance of understanding and appreciating and valuing the soul and then also understanding the afterlife because that's literally, that's part of the physical, the, the, the spiritual enlightenment process is developing that understanding. 
Yeah, I mean, for the most part, track. mostly science have spent their time looking at things and, you know, and took ages to figure out, wait a minute, most of this is empty space. Then they started to look at things like dark matter and, you know, we're finally getting there. But, you know, um, even a particle, you know, quantum physics has proven it's not even there until it's you observe. It's just empty space, yeah. You know, yeah. So, but, but, but I see the biggest issue with it in the total sidetrack. We, we can do these sidetracks because we still got to... We got well, that's what it is, right? It's flowing, <laughs> right? So we don't know what we're going to say. That's the whole point. So yeah. it's wherever, wherever the God takes us, you know? So, you know, the intellect is like the steering wheel. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. we got, uh, we got to learn to control it a what, little bit. The intuition is what's allowing us to channel, you know? We're connected to that monad, folks, you know? And that's why yeah. we're able to, you know, that's why each of us can hold the mic for 10 hours at a time and just feel like, you know, five minutes passed. You know, that's, yes. that's, that's, that's how you get lost in time and space is when you are channeling a, your inner creativity, your inner inspiration, you know, so whether it's somebody channeling this knowledge like me and Campbell, or it's, you know, um, you know, an artist getting lost in a, in a work of art and getting lost for eight hours and thinking it's five minutes, we're channeling, channeling the inner light. Only we're focused on wisdom and expression of wisdom and knowledge, whereas somebody is focused on expression of beauty through a medium such as painting or sculpture or architecture or whatever, you know. But it's the, the concept and the idea is the same. It's channeling the light, you know, to getting and, in touch with the, the sun. Soul and channeling. We're talking about the sun, right? The sun mm -hmm. and the light. We, the sun and the light that the sun, sun shines can never be separate. It no. can never be separated. So we are like the light from the sun. We, well, we yeah. are its very essence. So if God is the sun, which it is a source of, you know, that is the yeah. source. It is a manifestation of, of God. It's, uh, you know, the macro to the micro. So, but it, it breaks down in many different layers and many, many different ways, the way we see it. But we can break it back upwards as well. It's very easy to do that. So, you know, you just got to look at the stages where everything is broken in, broken down. But, you know, like the divine logos into the monad, into the egoic. And it's always broken down. And then you can always break it back up as well. So you can figure out where it came from. So that's the great thing that God's done. It's not made it difficult, really. Um, and, and to add to that, uh, since we are the sun, and I talk about that in the Magus, that was, that's my, my favorite lesson, that, that literally our chakric system, you have uh, in your center, not in the heart chakra, but kind of in between the heart chakra, and the solar plexus chakra, it's called the Teferit sphere. And so that is synonymous and corresponds with the sun. But what's interesting is that this is why hermeticism is so beautiful. Uh, your higher powers, so your virtues that, that you develop, that your character develops, right? Because you have character and personality. Personality is ego, character is uh, soul. So your soul characteristics and virtues are actually embodied, according to hermetic science, by this, the ancient planets that revolve around the sun, folks. And that's why astrology is 100% accurate because mm -hmm. we are essentially channeling light, A, from the stars that are beaming here from all these different constellations, never mind just the zodiacal ones, but the ones outside of the zodiacal belt. But are our, our who we really are. We are, each of us, imagine yourself as a, as a massive being with the sun in your center, and then you have the entire solar system revolving around you. And that's a very ancient hermetic alchemical yeah. image. And the idea is then to integrate the powers of those planets and their, you know, it's really their powers, like, you know, Mercury, the intellect, Venus, you know, the love principle and all these different ones, they all have different correspondences, which Kabbalistically then are, are, they describe our inner functions, right? So, and that's why when we were talking about in the last video last week, I was talking about the tree of life. And I said, well, the only way to truly understand the tree of life is lay it flat horizontally and then put yourself in the center in the sun and then understand that this is actually a map of the solar system and your different functions are attributed they correspond to each of these different planets. And then you can tune into those powers through, I have that in my book, um, or, you know, through meditation, through mantras, right? And so it, that's why uh, hermeticism and the hermetic principles are truly the key because uh, they allow us to practically work on these different parts of self. So it's not just a philosophy anymore. It really is a practical science. You know, that's why I, yeah. I love hermeticism so much. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's very, very practical. And you, you've, You've got to everything you read, really, like you've for it to become true wisdom, it has to be applied to life. Um, and how you apply it might be a little bit different to somebody else, like, right? but we have to apply 
everything we learn to life because knowledge is useless otherwise if it's not applied it knowledge only when applied becomes true wisdom and even the yes. whole yeah. some people call it inner inner standing some people call it we know it as understanding right mostly but understanding when you understand something right people love to play with the words and change things around <laughs> i know right what's that all about i noticed that too <laughs> It's always been understanding, understanding but now it's understanding, man. But we we always understood understanding. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought I was good with it. I was all right with it. No, I'm all right with it, man. Yeah, <laughs> call it what you like, but don't get caught up with the labels. But understanding, understanding, right? Same thing. That's, yeah, that's something that your mind does. You're on. You you got to take knowledge and you got to put it together. That knowledge needs to be understood. Now, everyone's way of understanding is a little bit different. And this is where you've got you you've got to embrace the power of your mind, your personal mind, the way it works. Because the thing what happens at school is they teach you what to think about. They don't really teach you how to think, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what we've got to remember, really, as fucking adults, is how to properly think, how to really take control of this mind. Because this is the this is the mind. We keep saying the mind. You know, somebody said. Um, you know, but the body controls the mind. Yes, physiology is absolutely important. Mm -hmm. Like your physiology, is safe, but your physiology is controlled by your mind. Yeah, you know, and your it's even proven. Mind. Your whole biology. Proven, is yeah, and it's, it's even proven that your autonomic fu functions of your nervous system, such as the heart rate, uh, you know, your heart beating and your your you breathing and all these, you know, like you going to the bathroom, all of these processes you can actually control with the mind of course you have to go into a very very deep meditation yeah. to, be able to alter these states and that's what some of these yogis uh from from india are some more developed ones they you know apparently have these abilities and i do believe that because there's a science behind how it works you know because mm -hmm. it truly is the mind is the mind is first the body comes second right so yes the, but if you just study the body you won't know the existence of the mind this is the fault of science again mm. you know they everything's they've they limit the mind to the brain too. and the yeah. brain your mind is way beyond the uh your mind is yeah, way beyond way the brain and you've got to get yeah. beyond thinking the mind is the brain the brain is the consciousness receiver it receives yeah. consciousness it's like your phone is receiving the wi-fi signal consciousness the eternal mind of god is the wi-fi signal right like you yeah. remember that's the broadcaster Right, yeah, your yeah. brain is the receiver of the broadcasting signal. Yeah, and then it does its own thing. It's got its own waves and neurons firing and all of that. But you know, if you just, it's kind of like the chicken and the egg thing, right? If you just focus, well, the egg came first. I mean, you have to kind of step out of like, okay, we're trying to just prove the reality by looking at things that we can prove. Oh, this is real. There's a mouse and a keyboard and. No, but you know, what is it that that's what as above so below is and that's what activates all of these inner uh, uh, all of these other um, hermetic principles is as above so below because the idea is well, if the all is mind universe is mental, then by raising your consciousness to a higher level, you can now control everything that's below, right? So you have all, you know, mm -hmm. I describe in my books, you have the inner cosmic planes, which are synonymous with the elements, the five elements, which are then synonymous with the seven chakras. So by learning to master your, by healing your chakras and tuning them through spiritual modalities and magic and tuning forks and whatever, you're actually learning to control these inner functions Right, so that you can essentially, at the end of the day, become a, a better uh, co-creator with the creator. You become a, a master manifester, you know, and that's where, that's what we're both teaching teaching our followers. Essentially, someone said Linux. Yeah, Linux. It's basically an operating system. I mean, you are you are basically running yeah. programs. Your brain runs programs, but remember, your brain is programmable. So, what yeah. programs you run, you can change. Like you can literally reprogram your brain. But yeah. it's also, it's way more powerful than a computer, which is just programmable, because this can receive something that's way beyond this world. Yeah, exactly. and, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's way beyond the computer. So that's why no computer will ever replicate what the brain can do, because the way it receives higher consciousness and insights no. into other dimensions and realities. I mean, you can go to sleep at night on your bed and your mind literally creates a brand new reality for you to exist in. And that's what it does, yeah. That's yeah. how it creates the, the entire lucid dream, dream world. Yeah. yeah, the entire lucid dream world. There's different levels. There's level when you step outside of your body, you're actually 
surfing the divine cosmic planes, talking to extraterrestrials. Lucid dreaming is awesome, man. When you do it properly, yeah. I mean, there's even some, t there's some, even a supplement you can take called Hoopazine A. It improves your ability to lucid dream. And actually, before I truly, truly awakened, that's what I used to do was a lot of lucid dreaming. It was my thing. But then yeah. you, you get to the point where you realize, wait a minute, this is the dream. Those were just yeah. other dreams within the dream, like the whole concept between in that it's film Inception, inception. dreams within it's a dream. Inception. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and, but, but this is what I was going to say is that in the lucid dream world, it's your imagination working at hyper speed, hyper consciousness that I call. And that's what creates where you're literally, it's like the movie Inception. You're building your reality. The moment you open your eyes, you look outwards in a lucid dream, you just built what you're seeing. And then you turn left, you just built what you're seeing there. You turn right, you built that. So you and have- even science has proven this, that, that, yeah. that what you're looking at doesn't exist until you observe it. Science has actually yeah. proven that. Exactly, so it's like yeah. an airy fairy yeah. object. It's not, it's not like an airy fairy concept. It's a tr it's a, even science has proven it. And I was going to add this fully related to the topic. This is the issue with AI. AI only allows us to take what we input into it. There is no higher source, a higher channel. So AI can never replace humans because we never. have the channel to God, whereas AI is just something that we have created that we input and then it uses sure it's a supercomputer there's all these different ais now doing incredible things but that's all information that a human has inputted some some time in the past and then this thing just mixes mashes information but it's nothing new there is no ai cannot give you something new it can give you a, a rehash or different uh you know a presentation of something that we input it whereas humans we have the ability and we do every single waking moment when we raise our consciousness and stillness and we still our minds let's say the average person stills their mind and they can reach that light of god in kether in the crown and now they can be they, they can bring that inspiration down and channel it through creativity or just being a good person oh. or whatever it is yeah sorry i'm just asked to see the question hoopazine hoopazine a yeah so somebody put it right h-u-p-e-r-z-i-n-a yeah, sorry about that. Go on. Yeah. Aren't we Earth's AI? Someone asked. I would say we are definitely not. We there artificial intelligence is something that's artificial. It's man made. It's created. We're we're not yeah. man made. We're, we're not divine created. intelligence. We're created by yeah. God. We're not artificial. We're divine intelligence. There's a big difference. Divine intelligence yeah. is something that they're trying to mimic. Well, we're never mimic. Yes. It's it's, they're it's trying a... to mimic it, but it will never be at that level. When you know the divine and how the divine is 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 truly divine, man, you can't you can't make yeah. an artificial divine intelligence. Yeah. It will never, never. happen. Never, never happen. And that man, that's going to be the fault with society. By the way, if too many people go with this, we're going to strip our. It's literally like that movie with um, what's uh, what's Batman guy's name? Christian Bale. That movie where mm. the, that that dystopia in the future where like people lose their their connection with their soul because they just accept that the only thing that's real is logic and reason and that mm. emotion is not real and stuff and yeah, this, is, yeah. this is the dystopia that we're headed to folks if people at a, on a mass level accept that um that ai is something that can change us that can replace us it never can okay no. this you're looking at terminator scenario number one where you give it enough input eventually it's going to turn on you because it has a survival mechanism okay but number two yeah. you're not going to further society you're going to make humans more lazy okay and, and because we won't need to do things physically we'll have machines and things you know and make us lazy make us stupid because you're not using your brain anymore you cannot replace god we are god beings we're demigods we have god inside of us AI mm. will never have God. They will never no. replicate a human they, soul. A robot would never isolated. have a Kundalini experience and enlightenment. No. no. It's impossible. No. But see, the problem is we have too many people in power, and it's total like, sidetrack. We have too many people in power that believe in this whole transhumanism and whatever, blah, 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 because they're not spiritual themselves, yeah? If That's they were right. spiritual, yeah, exactly. yeah, they wouldn't understand it. It, it would just wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense to them. It wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be something that they would, their mind would even be able to conceive. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, you know, you got to remember, you know, who are you talking to? You know, there's certain people are just not going to get it, right? Yeah, um, because they've it's, lost it's all touch you know is robots soul. and programs and computers, and you, you're not going to understand the divine, you know, it's, it's, and you've got to have a company, mindset. right? Misery mm -hmm. likes company. So the people in society who, have, who are bad people that are running the show and things, 
they lost touch with their souls. So misery likes company. Why don't we make other people lose touch with theirs? And now we can all be on the same like playing field. Well, no, because that's, that's, you know, that's something that God gave us. Nobody's going to strip us from our Godhood. Okay. This, you know, it's going to be an all out war if people don't stand up for what God gave them. Okay. And so all this media government's trying to run the show and trying to, you know, tell you things that are anti-God, anti-natural folks, you need to stand up against that because it, you know, you're looking at a scenario, dystopian future in the future, like where you're not, you're going to wish you, you did something when you had a chance. Yeah. This is the time more than ever where people need to stand up for what they believe in. You're a spiritual person, a soulful person. You need to stand up for that because they want to take that from you. They want to yeah, take that yeah. from you. And we spoke you, about you this last time. You that. We spoke about this on our last live, you know, and literally like God needs an army to, to, to save. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to kindle. Yeah, we're yeah, trying to kindle an army, kindle the flame within people through chats like this and whatever, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, like this is, we're living in a time more than ever, okay? Like it's exciting, but also, you know, it spells doom if people don't act right, which is mm -hmm. you need to stand up for what you believe in. You cannot take, let someone, some person in power, some government official is going to teach you about God. Come on, come on, yeah. folks. Like, stop listening to to your like president the president of america is going to teach you about god or my justin trudeau is going to teach you about god are you fucking kidding me come on come on yeah. folks this i is mean like, these guys these guys you got to just watch the way they speak they can't even speak without being told they, what god, they, wouldn't, to know god to, they wouldn't know what god was if god slapped them upside the head which i'm sure god tried to many times before they got it to these positions to try to educate us about God. Let's change the rules and laws about gender. Let's do all of this shit. Are you fucking kidding me? This yeah. shit has existed for thousands of years. For thousands of years, these principles have existed. And now you got some schmoes, like, you know, like your government officials. I'm not going to name them anymore. But, you know, yeah. just look at your own government, anybody's government, and they're fucking shit. Most of them, all right? And you're going to look at that, and that's, that's, who, who, that's who's going to teach you about God? Well, you know, like, if shit falls apart in your life, and you live in some dystopian, horrible future, you did it to yourself. You did it okay. to yourself. You listen to schmoes trying to educate you about God, something that you can only feel inside. Transhumanism mm -hmm. wants to teach you that God doesn't exist and that, that we're, we're all just biological beings. There's no soul. There's no afterlife. You want to accept mm -hmm. that? Why, so you can get a chip in your head that's going to make <laughs> VR even easier? So it's going to, porn's going to be even more amazing. Yeah. Come on, folks. Like, That's I'm nonsense. sorry. I'm, I'm totally yeah, you just got a feel. I mean, you got a Yeah, go, man. I love it. That's normally what I go into, man. Once you get that fire energy, going. Brother. The yeah, that's that Kundalini fire, isn't it? Like yeah. once it once it boils up, that's it. You gotta let it out. I mean, if anyone see my life, sometimes I go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. But you know, um, I was gonna say one thing also, and then sorry, I'll let you continue. Uh, I was gonna say. 2000 you people always say you know oh they're waiting for the next jesus to come he's gonna fly in from heaven lord almighty it's gonna be beautiful it's gonna be a white bearded man it's gonna be so nice and it's gonna be and i'm like okay well let's understand one thing if jesus first of all even existed that happened 2000 years ago the world was in a different state then every time the kundalini energy is the energy of the light you mm. you project that energy into a human being and living in a society in a certain time and age like we are now and it's going to bring out something else so you see it's not a coincidence that me and campbell both got this fucking thor like leonidas whoop some motherfucking ass energy because and i mean like whoop some bad guys ass energy because that's what's needed right now we don't need someone yeah, coming in and levitating on thin air and saying it's all gonna be peaceful no we need motherfuckers that are gonna fucking lay up arms and you know metaphorically speaking all right and stand up for god Okay, and yeah. we're trying to fire you guys up. That's what we're doing. Yeah, we're, it's we're doing inspire it and enlighten. It's not just inspire and, you know, there's, there's, you got to inspire, motivate, because people, let's face it, they put this world in a depressive state. Like, Very. everyone's fucking depressed. Everyone's miserable. They've taken the joy from people's hearts. So the joy is in your heart. The love comes from your heart. When we unite mm -hmm. through love, we can help each other find joy. And it's not that difficult, really. You don't yeah. have to buy anything. You don't have to go anywhere. You literally can have it right now. Say it, brother. This very moment. Woo! Right? I don't know, I'm like... So someone said, how do we dive into our mentalism? Well, basically, you've got to get out of the way, if I had to put it simply. 
like your conscious intellect, the need to know everything kind of gets in your way. Like learn to let go more. Let go because your soul is encoded with exactly what it needs to know to be the best version of what it needs to be in this lifetime. It's encoded in your DNA. So you just got to start shedding those layers. These metaphors come in again. The snake has to shed its old skin. We've got to shed that old skin. We've got to let go of those old layers that hold us back. So this won't be... You know, this is what's happened to this society. People have been traumatized. They've been, they've been given loads of situations with debt and all sorts of hardships and problems that you probably wouldn't need to face, you know, 2,000 years ago anyway. No, but, no, you wouldn't. That's, that's what I was trying know. to say. It was a different world back then. The, the, the world needed, you know, like I said, again, I'll say if Jesus even existed. Uh, and you know, there's many reasons behind that. We can get into that another time. But, you know, but back then, like, let's say the world needed an example of peace. We don't need an example of peace, you know, but even Jesus back then, people have this whole misconception. Jesus was this turn the other cheek, you know, uh, he forgave everything. That's not true. What happened when Jesus walked into the temple in, in Jerusalem on his ministry and he saw the merchants using the temple? What do you do? He was pretty yeah. fucking angry, wasn't he? He went in there, yeah, lifted the, the tables, tables and everything. everything. What's some ass? Yeah, exactly. You know, so so Jesus knew when to use the, the severity. Yeah, this is pure Kabbalah 101, severity and mercy, right? It wasn't just pure mercy, but you see, the, the powers that be, they want you to think he was all mercy. Because if he's all mercy turning the other cheek, what happens when they're fucking you in the ass? You're going to yeah. turn the other cheek. And what happens then? You became an accomplice to evil. So people don't realize, you know, the state of the world is such that it's here the way it is. The, how it is, is because we allowed it. All we mm -hmm. had to do is say no. And, and you, now is the time to say no. Because yeah. the goalpost is being moved further and further and further. You think that your rights are being taken away now. You're complaining. Oh, you can't post certain things on social media. But you're lucky you fucking have social media. You know, just yeah. think five years from now, you think you're going to have any rights if you don't put your foot down right now? Because they don't yeah. want you to liberate. You, like, you know, like, uh, there's always powers. And I'm not just specifying all oh, the powers right now, the elites. I'm not... In every day and age, there were always powers, okay, from any tradition. You look at any traditions, there's always... Yeah, yeah. I mean, even the times when Jesus was a Roman, person. right? There was the Romans. There's always someone trying to there's take control. There's always someone trying to enslave someone else. That's just no. the story all this time. It's not new. Yeah. It's just now it's being done covertly. It's being done through media and, you know, all these laws and rules and regulations. And you're supposed to kind of read between the lines. There's but always an empire. Lost. Like Roman Empire, whatever, yep. British Empire yep. taking over India. There's always some kind of empire. There's always, yeah, right? there's always, there's bad always guys something empire. trying yeah. to basically control the masses. Now, what you can become is your own fucking empire, right? The, the empire of, of your own you. world. Like, this literally yeah. is your world. Like, when you realize you're the dreamer of this dream, it's your dream. You're the one that's dreaming yeah. it, right? Yeah. You are the one dreaming it. You can actually choose how to see it. Like, you can look at something, what you would call bad, and see the good side to it. You can. Literally, it's a matter of perspective. Because somebody can see the same car and say, oh, that's a shit car. Somebody can see the same car and say, that's a good car. So there is no real good and bad. What you've got to realize is the illusion of good and bad. You know, so this is how they've got you. So this is all yeah. illusion, man. They're fucked with the illusion, and people have been manipulated to believe and reinforce... And the whole and idea of illusion. This comes into polarities and genders again. You know, you've got to yeah, try and yeah. end that. You know, yeah, so get yeah. beyond, beyond your, you've got to unlearn a lot of bullshit to truly connect with your true intelligence and not intellect. We're after intelligence here. Intelligence is a very intuition. different thing. You're trying yeah. to get the intuition from a higher intelligence, i.e. God, so you can be a channel, you know, the way that me, me and you are channeling wisdom, knowledge. Other people might channel something else. They might channel creativity. They might channel, I don't know, a new discovery. I mean, who knows? Like, this is how... You know, Creativity like, is important. Like, like you've got to express yourself. Like, get in flow with expressing. Like, so many people have just turned into this like ball, right? And that's what they wanted you to become. You was born like this, and you went like this, and you ended up like this. And they want you to stay like this. What you got to do is open up again because you literally are a flower that should be blossoming petal by petal by petal by petal every yeah, day. Yeah. Right? You should be growing just like your body grows naturally. You should be growing Mind. naturally. You know, yeah. in intelligence too. And it does happen naturally when you get out the way and you think it's all effort. This is, this is effortless. It's an effortless process. It's as effortless as watering, watering a plant and watching it grow. It's as effortless but, as that. 
But I, but know? I am going to add, I mean, it takes, it takes people uh, to get out of their comfort zone. People are comfortable. You know, they're comfortable because uh, they did everything perfect just so they get this thing, but that thing is limited, but that's okay. They can complain and whatever. And, you know, but if people get out of their comfort zone and realize, wait a second, every facet of your life is a result of how you think, what you believe and how you act, right? It's a thought, beliefs, and then actions, you know, and, and everything, but everything starts with thought, right? So when you repro re reprogram your thoughts, you can now reprogram, reprogram your beliefs over time, open up more of that pure potential of God, right? To come in, the light to come in, and then it remodels your entire character, personality, the ego takes a backseat to the soul and you become a co-creator. And now you're, you're, you're very difficult for someone to manipulate you because you see the truth, you know? Mm. Like I see, like, it's very easy for me to see when somebody's trying to like manipulate me or, or, or something like that. Whereas before I didn't have that ability, but now it's like, you know, because when you, when you're aligned with the light, you're aligned with the truth. And now when people try to fuck with you and move your truth, you're like, nah, no, no you got to stand up you for your truth. You without that, a doubt. Stand up for yourself. Yeah, yeah you got to stand up for your truth without a doubt. And when, when you speak your truth, I've done many reels and posts on this before, like speak your truth, like not somebody else's regurgitated truth. Like if, it's, yeah. if you don't truly believe it, like it's going to come out in your essence, in your soul, in your presence. There's a reason I have a presence. Never has a presence because we believe in our truth. Like, yeah. but it doesn't have to totally align with whatever anybody else believes. Like it has to and be from you. Like you've got yeah. to get it. Like you've got to be, you've got to be completely of, embodying your truth. Now there's universal truths, like the hermetic principles. These are universal truths. That's why they apply to everyone. Folks, you won't They're change universal. The, they apply to everyone, but you're going to have your own perspectives, your own opinions, your own way of seeing things, which is what makes you, you, you know, be unique. It has the word you in it. Be beautiful. It has the word you in it. Like to be beautiful yeah. and to be okay. unique, you need to be you, man. Like there's no yeah. other way. And I was going to add to that, uh, when a person is really aligned with their inner truth, they're going to find that the people they surround themselves with, they're no longer like them. In fact, mm -hmm. those people might consider you weird now. They might be like, oh, you're weird. You don't believe that? You're, you're weird. You know what? Fuck them. Don't, yeah. don't, it doesn't even matter what other people around you think. What matters is you connect with God, you know your truth. Because fact is, 70% of the people will are still led by by yeah. something other I than spoke their, about this in my last live um actually yesterday because the thing is most people won't you you can't really be who you truly are on front of most people you're interacting with in your daily life like your work colleagues business um colleagues even your own family like your own friend like my friends from school they're great i love them to bits but i can't talk about this stuff i couldn't have a conversation like i can have with never with that with them you know it doesn't make them less or me better or anything. It just is who they are in this lifetime. That's just, just not a part of their path right now. You know, so some certain people are interested in other things. No one's lesser or higher or anything but, like that. But, but, all but, just waves in one ocean, you know. But I will say people need to take pride in the fact that they're different because if they know they're coming from a good place and mm. if they're, and, you know, if they're going against the norm, take pride in that, folks. Don't feel like, oh, you need to. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're not in that time anymore. You know, and, and the fact is, those people that aren't uh, following you, if you are following the light, the people that aren't following you, they're just not evolved enough to understand no. where you're coming from. And if once they get evolved enough, they'll co completely understand you and then they'll get on your side, right? That's what God Army is all about, right? All of us on, on, on the same side because we believe in the same principles of this life. And we also realize the dire situation that we're in you know, as a society where we're falling apart spiritually, we're not being spiritually lifted, we're falling apart because mm -hmm. the news around the censorship and the government is tighter year in and year out. AI is rolling out, which people are going to be losing their a lot of jobs, the things that they their whole lives they, they spent on. Now is the time to stand up for what is right and what you believe in when you come from a good place. And don't worry about other people fact is when they come to your level when they are at the same vibration of consciousness they'll come to you and they'll say okay yeah sorry you know i i know i, I was wrong you you were right you know but yeah. but you gotta Just be put you your... and be you because you know at the end of the day you gotta enjoy your life and every day should be fucking enjoyed like there shouldn't be a day you miss Absolutely. the only way you're going to truly enjoy yourself is you're expressing who you are you know when you repress 
how you feel and what you are and who you are and you just hide it away you're basically that ball you're you know you're stuck you know you're not really showing yourself and this is why a lot of people are depressed and miserable like just create stuff like artistically do videos post expressions so i'm on here i because i enjoy this you know i've run my other two businesses and stuff but i do this because firstly it's sharing knowledge and wisdom but i'm getting to express myself in a way that i probably wouldn't be able to amongst most people i interact with on a day-to-day -day world you know yeah. and the great thing yeah. is people watch and listen as well so it's a win-win situation <laughs> and it's like a pay, pay it forward they see you you inspire them then they take something from you then they yeah. say it to other people and then those people are inspired then they're like okay then they say i mean this is how we're awakening one another right we're awakening one another by spreading the gospel essentially you know this is not you know i'm not the sound correction the gospel meaning the yeah. gospel of today's day and age this is what we need to be sharing with one another drawing the line in the sand against people and powers that don't want you to spiritually evolve okay and, 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 and you know and and, we're and all gonna right. we're all evolving so it's all gone everyone's evolving you are going to be at the right place at the right time or divine timing and make sure that when you feel that you've got that connection that you do something with it don't just waste it because uh you've got to do got to because someone will connect with you like when i first started doing this i remember the mind of matter 18 months ago i started this page it's like hit nearly 60,000 followers today so you know uh, 18 months ago <laughs> over 100,000 on facebook man and so it's growing quick so yes i'm like marmite right this is thing people it's like a yeast extract put, people put it on toast in england you either love it or you hate it right but there's going to be people there's going to be people that I love and hate you too you know some people are going to hate me right that's fine fine i'm used to that yeah but, but i think most very people, few love people me. hate you and but you know? most will what you're talking about what i'm talking about it's hard to hate the only yeah. way to really hate what we're talking about is if you're like a fundamentalist religious exactly. person a fundamentalist christian or a fundamentalist islamic person or whatever just if you're a fundamentalist that those are the ones that attack us those are the ones that attack me. yeah yeah I mean, they, I get, me yeah. in my dms and stuff like you better stop yeah. talking about what you're speaking about because our institution right. isn't happy this is actually happening you guys don't see this behind the behind the scenes <laughs> yeah, I yeah, really people, messaged people, that, yeah. people threatened yeah. me yeah so, so you had threats i haven't had threats i've had threats. Yeah. yeah but i just block them man it's easy enough oh hey, dude me. the block <laughs> button right oh. <laughs> How amazing is the block and the delete button? You know, exactly. like, uh, it's actually funny. Like uh, today, I, I, I did like a post on like uh, Jesus having a Kundalini awakening, all these like different uh, pictures and things, right? It's yeah. an AI generated thing. And then I wake up this morning and there's like 50 comments. Oh, this is white supremacism. Jesus yeah. was not white. He was black. And then Jesus was I Asian. Had that. I, I had the same. I had the same. <laughs> I had to and say, it, man. But I had funny to block so many people because of a Jesus post. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Jesus, oh, that, that's most, more triggered than anything. But what's funny yeah. is people think that we're going to actually engage with them. Nah, yes. We're not stupid. We've got the button and block button. You know, like, who's got time to deal with that crazy shit? I'm like, time I have time to have conversation with an idiot. <laughs> yeah, you know, so <laughs> it's funny. But, you know, it's funny. Like, I'm sure those people are, in a way, they're just trying to uh, individualize themselves and, find, like, I don't know, find themselves. But, you know, they're just, they, they have to project hate onto people like me and you and whomever, you know, so that they can feel right in what they believe in. Because deep down, their soul must know, and it does recognize and that. Christ belief, is a true thing. Christ consciousness is a real thing. It's a true yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter if he's black, white, Asian, or fucking whatever. Like, who, who, that, that's not important. Like, fact is, I don't even think the dude existed, but it doesn't matter. Who cares? It's a beautiful story that we can believe in and align with the archetype yeah. behind Jesus Christ. That's great. We can all agree on that. We can all, it doesn't matter what religion or culture, you know, you're from, if you're Buddhist or Hindu or this or that, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, mm. in every culture, there is a character like Jesus Okay. Well, I like just call it, it consciousness. I call it Shiva consciousness, Buddha consciousness, Shiva consciousness, Christ consciousness, Christ consciousness, consciousness. Because literally, when you connect to mind, God the eternal mind, that's what te it teaches you directly. It teaches you literally my knowledge and wisdom from Christ consciousness stuff, like humility, unconditional love. Those are the main messages. Yeah, yeah that's Shiva, all. It's universal. It comes yeah. directly from consciousness up there, like the Akashic records are up there. Um, yeah. The con God consciousness. 
the consciousness of the masters exists in the eternal mind of God. Like you literally yeah, can download it. You literally yeah, yeah. download it. Like uh, honestly, I, I think that uh, I think religion has caused way more harm than good. Okay, yeah. because you know you, you have these uh, philosophies like the Hermeticism, which is way older than like any religion. You, you know, it's it's like as old as Egypt and Sumeria. You know, even probably before that, to like pre-flood Atlantean times, Lem mm -hmm. Lemuria, whatever. You know, it's as old as that. Why? Because it's real. It's it's always existed, I believe. Okay, but then yeah, religion yeah. comes in and takes takes the work of characters like Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, Moses, whatever, you know, who, 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 who made a contribution and then they, they set their, like, how they lived, right? That's like the laws of how do you be Jesus? Well, you, there's these principles. How are you, how do you get to be like Buddha consciousness, which is very similar, you know, just a little bit more maybe peaceful, focused on meditation because that side of the world. Yeah, and then you have that. Not, which is very similar, which is from Sikhism, because I'm born in a Sikh, but it yeah, teaches yeah. very similar stuff, but the main thing it teaches is, look, just, you know, know there's a God, remember God, and serve one another. It's called seva, service to mankind, yeah. which is equality, yeah. practice, yes, living sir. equality, serve one another. Like, like, don't see discrimination and separation. Actually, Sikhism wasn't even meant to be a religion. It was because the Guru Nanak was born a Hindu. And he said, oh, okay. there's no such thing as Hindu and Muslim because there's only one. So it actually starts yeah. off, there's only one creator, and truth is its name. However yeah. you understand yeah, yeah. it, well, truth that's is it. down truth, to you. Yeah. You know, so and truth is wanna, down to you. If people want to worship something, want to worship something, connect with something, worship the sun. I mean, this is what all of these yeah, yeah. deities, all the, most of them are solar deities. Jesus is a solar deity. Buddha, solar deity. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Maham, all of them, okay? They're all essentially solar deities because that, the, the, it's the qualities of the sun, the light, the warmth, the love, the joy, the vitality, yeah. all you these things, chronic energy, it. right? It's the physical embodiment things. of it. It basically yeah. is. Yeah, they're just physical embodiments, right? And and these guys were through allegory, symbolism, they tried to bring the understanding of, you know, the sun, the solar deity, uh, the life, death, resurrection deity, because the sun right now, you know, is, well, right now is an increase, right? And then we're going to head mm -hmm. to so-called the resurrection of Jesus, i.e. the sun, which will be, uh, you know, consequently, the day of spring. Oh, what a coincidence! Winter you know, then the death well. is the fall. Yeah. It, it's essentially, uh, it's and I say that that's the green man from paganism. Green man being all of vegetation. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's uh, when the sun. Uh, you know, everybody knows the sun cycles, right? And but we're living alchemically those same cycles, right? And so these yeah. characters, like Jesus and them, they understood that because they were esotericists. Okay, they had this deep knowledge. And then they try to convey it through symbol, metaphor, allegory, through numbers and things. And then religion comes along and takes all of that incredible knowledge, which was amazing when it was given, amazing, right? Life-changing for people. And then they take all of that and then they say, well, we're going to take all of it. We're going to become the middleman and you're going to have to pay to be part of this. And yeah. we're going to yeah. take it literally. Because mm -hmm. that's the key. That's what religion does. It makes you believe in everything literally because then it takes away the juice. It takes mm -hmm. away the nectar of what what those yeah yeah it, be, it becomes a middleman in between you and god like there becomes an institution between you and god like you've got to find god it's through this structure whereas yeah. it's nonsense you can find god through yourself and that's the actually the through only nature. true way you'll find it is through yourself yeah um, and that's what people are doing right so we kind of have a revolution now in a sense especially with social media sharing of information all that people are understanding these things on a deeper level because i do believe that mass awakening is taking place i do believe it started probably the end of the mayan calendar you know uh what was it 13 mm -hmm. years uh, uh 11 years ago you know but it's a gradual process right people think the age of aquarius is like today boom age of aquarius no, no, it's all divine timing you know like it's timing and you it's know, a process it's, it's, right it, it takes time. time birth you know the baby is conceived it takes nine months roughly yeah. to be born yeah. right so there's yeah. this incubation period we're going through the incubation period. Like, we're, we're yeah. going through we're that. The, the birth night. is coming. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, I believe that we're in the dark night of the soul as a mass, as a species, because of, uh, you know, usually what happens is, it's like the saying goes, the night is darkest before the dawn. Now, if mm -hmm. we look at how society looks now versus how it looked five years ago, 
Well, it's a lot darker now. There's a lot more constriction on people. There's a lot more restrictions, a lot more censorship, a lot more control, right? So now yeah. you can be like, well, okay, the night is dark as before the dawn. It must imply that on the flip side, now this is that polarity principle from the Kaibalian, the light is stronger than ever. Now, if the light is stronger mm -hmm. than ever, what happens when you go outside, you know, on a hot summer day, you turn on the light? With that bright light, you get all these moths and all these different insects, these bugs, and they swarm it, right? Because the light is bright. The, the more light that you carry in your heart, the more darkness tries to attack you. Right? Oh, yeah. snap it out of you right it's the yeah that's yeah. how the balance is created oh, and so shit, i just realized the time is 10 past <laughs> <laughs> you didn't i did <laughs> uh, but anyways uh if you want we can wrap it up and continue i was going to mention here we'll finish, just, up, have finish it up and we'll um we'll, close we'll continue off. next next week sure i was going to mention uh just when people are looking at principle of mentalism uh mental transmutation why don't we take five minutes I'll say my bit on it and because yeah, sure. this is it completely, it relates anyways, we have kind of been talking about it, but the process of uh, controlling your own inner vibration, okay, the vibrations of your own thoughts, the thoughts of other people that come in, that try to penetrate your consciousness and affect it, okay, there is a process called mental transmutation that hermeticists talk about. What it means is that you can raise your vibration of consciousness to a higher level and so that everything that's hitting you Okay, like like all the impulses that are hitting you, um, you can now avoid that, right? So you rise to a higher plane of consciousness because, like I describe in my books, you have these cosmic planes, and the furthest, you know, the furthermost uh, plane would be the highest one. So if you uh, project your consciousness to come uh, to that furthest to connect with, let's say, Sahasrara chakra, raise the vibration where it's like vibrating so fast it's almost at rest. Now everything that's coming in from from your environment, all the bombardments daily, right? All the bad stuff, the impulses, um, thought projections of other people. Now you can avoid that, right? So you, hermeticist, so this part, mental transmutation, um, it means you, you may, fe you will feel it emotionally. So you'll feel the emotional down of somebody's negative energy affecting you. But when you raise your consciousness to that level, you'll feel it, but it'll pass because yeah. the principle of rhythm is what takes place and everything that, so that's the thing, emotions are regulated by the principle of rhythm. And so you have good, or you have love and hate, right? And so if you love, they do something bad, what happens, you, you swing back. But there mm -hmm. is what's called a compensation principle. And so if, if there's a quick swing, then that means that now to balance it out, it's going to swing back quickly again. But if it's a slow swing, so you go from love to hate, and it takes like a, a week, to hate someone, okay, by filling your head with negative stuff, now it's going to take you another week to love them again, okay? But you can avoid all of these emotional expressions in your emotions, this bad stuff, which is constantly moving like a pendulum. You can avoid that by applying this mental transmutation, rise in, rising to a higher plane of consciousness, and then all of that stuff happens, and it doesn't affect you. And actually, folks, this is part of the Kundalini awakening process, okay, because it allows you to vibrate so much higher that you are no longer emotionally moved by things. And you will notice spiritually enlightened people are not emotionally triggered like unenlightened people. And that's why. is because their consciousness is resonating at a much higher level. And the lower planes cannot affect the higher planes. But the higher planes can affect the lower planes. Okay? And so that's a big part of this all is mind, universe is mental, and how you can control your realities raise your mind to a higher plane just don't accept that a thought a negative thought is going to take hold of your conscience don't accept it focus instead on the opposite right so something bad happens oh it happened it's a good thing because of da 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 and so you you constantly are programming reprogramming your mind and then a year two years passes and all of a sudden you realize holy shit, now you become part of the laws okay and that's what a kundalini awakening does it allows you to become part of the laws and so you're no longer going against them. And that's what Taoism is, right? You know, uh, Taoism is going with the Tao, with nature, uh, the expression of the Tao, which is, you know, the, the, the universal force. You're no longer... Now you're talking my language. <laughs> yeah, so if you want, you take over. You're, you're well, Taoism Tao for me is, real, you know, the yin-yang is a real important concept, but the Tao is the way. So it's a natural, effortless way of the universe. Like, yeah. just the way, like, you watch the ocean and the oceans are just... Yeah. And they're going and they're moving. But everything's always constantly moving, right? So your emotions, okay. you will go for these states. 
these fluxes. What you got to do is listen, really. Like any too long in one state will, there's an extreme to it. Like yin mm -hmm. is relaxed, peaceful, blissful. You stay there too long, you'll get bored, you'll get depressed. So once yeah. it got, once what should be good turns into, oh, it doesn't feel right, that means go to yang. You basically mm -hmm. literally switch it. So this is the pendulum, making the pendulum swing. So you, you go to yang, then you do something productive, you get moving, get energized. Now yeah. you do that too much, you do too much, you're going to get stressed. You're going to feel overworked. Don't you're going to feel exhausted. Yeah. So when that happens, you go back to yin. Find some peace. Find some bliss. Go in nature. Have a walk in nature. Find some peace. You know, you don't have to find it in your mind. You can always find it in nature. So this is like the trick that I play because I don't know if many people know, but I actually am a di I am diagnosed with emotionally unstable personality disorder. And the way I manage this, right? Okay, these idiots, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so what, uh, the way I, I manage it, is I manage my emotions. Now, some people, their emotions sway more quickly. So, but that's actually a superpower if you know how to harness it, if you know how to use it yep. properly. So I can yep. become relaxed very quickly. I can become energized literally instantly. So like, it's a superpower once you know how to manage it. But if yep. you don't yep. manage it, you're just literally being, you're like, the ocean is just pulling the waves left, right, and the center, and you're just being, you know, wiggled around with, without really knowing what the fuck's going on. But when you learn to flow with it, you ride the wave. So there's times where you got your energy level is going to take a dip. That's the time to relax. When the energy level's there, I mean, you can bring your energy levels up with some breath work, do, get moving. You can always change your energy levels. Like, literally, um, that's what I show people to do with breath work. You know, you can use breath work to slow yourself down, rhythm and vibration. So you want to slow down, just breathe slowly. If everything's rhythm and vibration, breathe slower. Because otherwise, just breathe unconscious, just breathe slowly. You want to feel energized? Inhale, but do it quickly and intensely. You get energy yeah. instantly. Yeah. It's literally instant. There's no, like, you literally can change your state of mind that quickly. Through breathing. But you're That's taking control. Like, you're not just being pulled in the directions. Like, you just, you're taking control of it. You're in control. You're the one that has the power, like, to feel the way you want to feel right now. So, you know, when you come from that perspective, like, you know, transmuting even energies, like, some everyone gets triggered, right? Just don't react. Like, yeah, what's, right, yeah. what's, the, what's the result of the trigger? Feel it. Because that anger, that frustration, is typically anger and frustration comes from a trigger. And that yeah. anger and frustration is actually a very powerful energy because anger, that's why when it comes out and you don't mean to say something, it comes out and it's like, Ugh. But yeah. actually, if you harness that energy, you control it, you transmute anger, frustration into motivation, into confidence. You can actually transmute the same energy, the same energy, the anger and frustration, and use it to motivate you. Right. And also, uh, I, I was going to add uh, anger, especially like uh, I, you know, being Bosnian and <laughs> this has been a challenge my entire life. But I will say um, anger can be I don't know if you if you've seen that Vi watch Vikings, Ivar the Boneless. And that's what made Ivar so special from all of Ragnar's sons. He didn't have his legs were they weren't working, but he was angry. And so Ragnar, the king, he saw Within Ivar, he saw something special. He said, what separates you is that anger. Because if you use that anger constructively, you can become a greater it's the force. Thought, man. Like, everyone gets triggered. That anger shows up for a reason. Because things are supposed to frustrate and you make, make you angry. But you're just yeah, not supposed, supposed to. to get angry. You're not yeah. meant to show it. Like, the way people just show it the wrong way. You're supposed to hold you're that in. Supposed to hold yeah. it in. Hold it in. That that the pain, the suffering makes you stronger. That anger makes you stronger. That's where the way the strength comes from. Like, if you don't go for yeah, anything, you're going to be a weak motherfucker. From... You got to, you got to go through shit to become strong. Like, that's yeah, the that's the strength from. card uh, from the tarot is actually, it's about how you balance mercy and severity. And I was going to add also, when you're experiencing anger, um, you know, just a quick thing, if people want to bypass anger and that quick reaction that we all have, right? Take a quick deep breath when you feel it. It's literally that mental transmutation that we're yes. talking about. It doesn't here. take long. No. Take a deep breath. Bring the anger, the negativity of the emotion of anger, right? The negativity, because it's the triggering of your emotion somewhere in the subconscious. Bring it into your stomach and diffuse it. And it will go away, neutralize it. Okay. Yeah, most of my best ideas come from 
yeah. getting triggered. Like I, yeah. I'll get triggered by something. I'm like, let's turn this into something positive, creative. Yeah, take a moment. Yeah. Take a moment, folks. Like I say, you know, how irritating is for me and Campbell. You know, we'll say something on on you know social media, Instagram, and these people are getting triggered, like the like these fundamentalist Christians. Rah, rah, rah. But take yeah. a moment, fundamentalist Christians. Take a moment. You know, yeah. if you're listening, take a moment and just step back and be like, why am I being triggered? Take a deep breath, and then you know what? Express it with with respect. It's because they don't believe respect in their own truth enough. That's what it is. That's why they're triggering. Because That's if they had enough, yeah. if they truly believe what they believed, they would not be they triggered. They would be triggered. Yeah, like the people that are in charge of their lives, they're not triggered. Like no. you know, if, if we look at powerful people, they're not easily triggered. That's not a coincidence, folks. Like they're they're like that because they spent their whole lives mastering these forces that allow them to be on top. Okay, they it's not doubts. like you can. They still have doubts because they, they, yeah, they still have doubts for reasons. And if they would just embrace their doubts and wait a minute, mm, yeah, and actually understand this doubt, it's not really hate. They're expressing it as hate and anger, and oh, you shouldn't be saying that. But really, it's doubt. It's their it's doubt. doubt. It's doubt in their own beliefs. Yeah, it's because we're saying doubt. something triggering because they know that there's truth behind what we're saying, and whereas they can't argue the truth, what they believe is the truth from their side. And that's so it's just becomes it's kind of like in today's day and age in society where you can't say something. Oh, you're hurting my feelings. Well, fuck your feelings. You know, your feelings being hurt are there to teach you how to overcome whatever is triggering you so you can be a better, stronger uh, human being. So you can be an asset to society. You know, when, when these powers, the governments are so focused on, oh, you can't say certain things because these are people's feelings. They're basically saying, we want you to stagnate. We don't give a shit about you. We like you guys not growing. So we're going to introduce something new and say, well, now you can't hurt people's mechanism. You know, 10 years ago, people were allowed to, to say certain things that right now they're not. Mm -hmm. you, were, you, you, were, you were coming out there a little bit, fuzzing out. Yeah, anyways, so yeah, you, man. So is you. Yeah, listen, yeah. bro. I think we we've done um we've done like an hour and so. about fifteen minutes now. So That's let's call this one done. We talk about we spoke about hermetic principles. Thank you very much, my man. Thank you very much. Pleasure as always. Pleasure as Thank always. You guys. Thank you. So bro. hopefully everyone that says enjoyed uh, our little chat today. So we spoke about the all is mind mentalism and a few other random things that came out here and there because we don't script this stuff. It's whatever yeah. needs to come out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't think we can control that because we're literally channeling spirit. Uh, yeah, I tried to just, I tried to stick to just all is my universe is mental. It's hard, isn't it? In the twentieth minute, I was like, oh, I uh, you know, this is this is why I I used to put a subject on my um, lives before. Now I just don't yeah. know because I don't yeah. know, I'm doing it blank because well, you're channeling. Yeah, <laughs> I, I but, thought it. And I would speak about so many things that I didn't plan to speak about. I was like, where did this come yeah. from? I know where yeah. it comes from, from higher intelligence. But, um, you know, keep in mind, I'm, I'm probably one of the most unusual suspects you will ever expect to be talking about this stuff. People look at me and they think, is this the same person I'm listening to? Because <laughs> I just don't look like the kind of person that should be speaking about the things I speak about. It's weird. But I totally well, I get know. I, I think you do. <laughs> I, think you're, I think you're a Leonidas looking motherfucker. Oh, thank you, man. You know, people, yeah, people think we should be wearing those robes and, you know, have turbans and all sorts, but. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, but that's stupid people again, you know. Yeah, <laughs> they're, exactly. they're in some area, they're I, I thought about it once, but I thought, um, wait a minute, isn't that dressing up my ego? You know? Yeah, it's dressing up your persona, which you're literally stripping every time you get onto the camera and you speak like this, you're stripping the persona, the ego to become in this process of becoming as we both are. It's a lifelong yeah. process, you know, that we're, we're assets to God. We're God's right hand, left hand man. You know what I mean? And, That's and it. God's got many hands like the Hindu yeah. gods. God's got billions of hands and we need to each be a hand and yeah. play a part and help God. You know, that's what that's why I was getting fired up be because, you know, I don't use uh, I don't talk too much about it because um, but I have a lot of I have a lot of things to say. I know you do, too, as well. And we can get into that. Maybe in another one where just kind of just the rage that God's feeling right now at the state of the world. God's upset. God's angry and, and uses us as channels to convey that that God that's is why angry, sometimes that we 
because we're an embodiment of God. So sometimes you'll feel that frustration of God, like it's in you, like it literally manifests yeah. in you. But you'll feel yeah. it, but you, but it won't be in a bad way. It'll be like I need to do something for God because yeah, it's like just it rattling like people's this. cages. You know, I yeah, think we're so. trying to rattle people's cages, and that's uh, called tough love. You know, I mm -hmm. always say I'd rather have a friend that tells me when I'm doing something bad than a friend that doesn't tell me when I'm doing something bad because they don't want to hurt my feelings. That's not a friend. But yeah, in today's exactly. day and age, people have become like that where it's like, oh, well, you know, I have to protect their feelings. Feelings are not real, folks. Like, they're, they're, they're passive. Like, they, they change. Like, the, it's literally controlled by the moon. They, they, Nothing they, stays they forever, like man. Everything is yeah. rhythm and vibration constantly moving. You can't stay angry forever. You can't stay depressed forever. It always comes and goes. You know, even joy, it comes and goes, but you can bring joy there a lot more easily than people yeah, think. Like, you don't need to buy anything. You don't need to go anywhere. You literally can put music on. This one, I'm always listening to music. I'm always yeah, yeah, like vibing that. high because you literally vibe higher by changing the way you are right now. Like, hey, joy listen, comes from the heart, man. Our, our next talk, I want you to put on a cool song to start us with. I want to just jam with yeah. you. I was like, when I see you jam, I'm like... That's how I, I always start with a bit of music. I love that. I love that. Well, it's rhythm and vibration, right? Everything yeah, is rhythm and vibration. That. When it you listen to music, it when you listen to music, it gets you in flow. It gets you in flow, yeah. man. Yeah, it sets, it sets the tone for channeling the light, but also bringing out, you know, what, what our, like, uh, superpowers are, which, like I said, our superpowers are very similar in that sense, you know, and, like, music helps us kind of connect with that, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, lo Let's I love do it that. next That's... time. So, guys, next yeah. one, we'll do, um, so, number two is going to be correspondence, hermetic principle, as above, so below. Correspondence and other things. Cause, cause and other things. On... Yeah, That's which we cannot, we cannot disclose things. because we haven't got a fucking clue what we're going to say. <laughs> never, never. It's all just channeling. I don't think we'll run out because I think we got a lot of things to channel. Just yeah. God, man. You know, we don't take credit for this work, folks. You know, like, uh, just God channeling. Anyway, I is. can go on. You can. It literally yeah. is. Like, I have to watch back because I don't even know what I've said. I, I don't. Yeah, I really same, don't. same, same here. I just... And if you look at... Actually, this is what I going to say. If you look at my videos, let's say, on YouTube... All right, blah, let's, blah, put, blah. let's put some good vibes on, all right? So let's put some vibes on to finish off yeah, the day. Yeah, throw them on, throw them on. Something all epic, right. dude. All right, actually, I'm going to put something with some lyrics because I've done a reel on this the other day, but the lyrics are just... All right. That you can be free of all of your past pain, all of your loss and suffering that weighed you down and comes out of you. I would say, what's the catch? And you would be right to be sick. But what is true? What is for me? There we are. Oh, shit. What if you discovered the truth that we are going to be more of a being smarter? Why is it more It's got some superhero feel already. I can feel it. It's got a real superhero feel. Still look pretty good. It's fantastic. And I know this. That's it, man. You know, you know what I you know what my thing is? Uh, I, I'm into epic movie music. Epic movie music. I couldn't hear a word you're saying. I had the music on full blast. Oh yeah, <laughs> don't worry. I was gonna say I'm I'm uh, my thing is epic movie music like Gladiator theme. You know, oh, all, yeah, all I fun that stuff. stuff. Yeah, that's that's I listen to that all day. I'm I'm like it plays for me. That's how it feels. You know, it's like it plays to keep my work my work moving. Yeah, I only listen to Emily gets so annoyed. She does. She I love like, the, the epic movies. I do some Qigong videos sometimes to those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those yeah, epic, so, yeah. epic soundtracks. So I love that kind of stuff, man. But yeah. All right, uh, brother. Music is my thing, man. I'm always got music. Yeah, me too. Me. Well, it's the highest of the senses. It's the high. It's the most transcendental of the five senses. It connects. It connects you to spirit directly. Is sound is the only one. Well, All the other, the interesting yeah, thing. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize, like. You know, you whilst your thoughts do create visuals, mostly you hear your thoughts. So yeah. thoughts and sounds, in a way, the sound frequencies, right? So this yeah. is why I so listen to... Definitely sound frequencies, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sound frequencies. So when you listen to something else, you basically take your attention away from listening. You're tuning into a... Literally tuning into a different radio station. That's... Yeah. Um, exactly. You don't like yeah. what you're listening to? Listen to something else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing about music. All right, yeah. brother. All right, we'll guys, thank time. you very much for joining in. Thank you very much, Thank brother. you, everyone. Much love. Namaste, all. Thank you. <laughs> Peace out. We'll <laughs> see you next time.